Hello, and welcome to the Blockade Runner Podcast. My name is John, and today uh, I'm going to be talking about the leaked Duel of the Fates, um, Colin Trevorrow kind of leaked script um, concept art that came out. Uh, I guess it's been leaked for a week or two now. Um, some of this stuff has been confirmed to be real by Colin Trevorrow himself on Twitter, so I don't think there's much um, reason to doubt the validity of it. And there have been quite a few... Uh, or quite a bit, I guess, of information leaked about Duel of the Fates um, online over the last couple weeks. Now, um, I haven't been following that stuff super closely. I mean, I've been reading about it, but I don't have a, a copy of the script. I don't know. Um, I mean, I've, I've followed it as much as I can. But uh, what I want to do today is not like go through exhaustively what Colin Trevorrow's story for Duel of the Fates is, because you know I don't. Well, number one, that would take me uh, quite a while. And number two, I don't really feel like I'm necessarily an expert on that. Um, but what I do want to do is look at this uh, group of concept art images that leaked. Um, I think there's more too. So I have uh, a post online that, uh, that I found um, of something like 25 or 28 images um, that are uh, leaked from the Dual Fates concept art and... Um, Again, Trevor O has himself on Twitter um, confirmed that some of this stuff is for sure real. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of a fun way of uh, going through and looking at what um, episode nine could have been like had Colin Trevor O stayed on the project um, and had this version of the script been the one that they filmed. Um, so, yeah, I'll just kind of go through the images uh, one by one or a few of them kind of group together nicely, but I'll just go through them um, and talk about, uh, you know, kind of my thoughts on on, um, on those images and, and what Colin's uh, story would have been. So the first few images are set on a planet or location, I guess, called uh, Kuat or the Kuat moon. Um, and this whole sequence seems to, um, based on what I've read and and um, based on these images, it seems to revolve around an Imperial shipyard um, on this moon where Star Destroyers are being built. And there's some kind of big um, ring, like a ring surrounding the planet. Um, it reminds me a little bit of the shield uh, kind of setup in Rogue One. Um, but uh, this massive ring um, above the planet and it generates power and somehow aids in the production of the Star Destroyers. Um, and so the first couple images kind of um, are focused on that section of the script. And uh, from what I can tell, it seems like our resistance heroes are there to carry out a mission of some sort um, on the Kuat moon. And I don't know if their plan was to steal a Star Destroyer from the beginning or if that's just kind of how things shake out. But um, yeah, it looks like this sequence involves a little bit of undercover. Um, apparently Rose was going to have featured in this um, part of the script significantly. So, you know, that's definitely would have been nice to see. Um, but yeah, um, a number of, uh, or really most of our resistance heroes kind of undercover um, in this Kuat moon mission. Um, so the first image here uh, features a disguised BB-8, actually. So looking a little more like BB-8 or uh, BB-9E is it? His actual name from The Last Jedi, um, but he's got some kind of contraption on his head, and you can see that he's still clearly BB-8, but um, he's in disguise enough to cruise around this Star Destroyer or this um, the shipyard uh, on this Kuat moon. Uh, so that's cool. I mean, I think that definitely would have been fun, although it's, I mean, it strikes me as a little bit repetitive um, from the undercover mission in The Last Jedi, you know, uh, especially if you watch the movies back to back, like towards the end of The Last Jedi, we see Finn, Rose, and BB-8 uh, undercover um, infiltrating a, a Star Destroyer. Um, and then for this movie to open up with a sequence like that too is maybe a little repetitive, but uh, certainly could have been cool. Uh, the concept of this orbital ring uh, definitely looks pretty cool. So uh, I would have been down for that. Um, apparently there's uh, there would have been a whole um, component of this story on this Kuat moon involving migrant workers. Um, and I don't know if they're, I mean, because it's the Empire, I assume they're they're being forced to work here on this planet, or at least they're being um, mistreated. I've seen some talk that that perhaps Finn would have ended up um, in a similar situation. I don't know if that's here on the Kuat moon or somewhere else. Um, I don't think I was... Actually, that might be coming up later. But, uh, but yeah, it looks like a, a snowy kind of planet. It actually kind of looks somewhat similar to Kajimi from The Rise of Skywalker, but 
Uh, I think that's uh, a coincidence. Um, but yeah, I guess they're, they're, um, this planet obviously is kind of under first order, um, control. And so the, the, the people of this planet apparently are, are, um, powering this Imperial shipyard on Kuat. But, um, and then there's another image here of, uh, Ray, Finn, and Poe, and they are, um, it says uh, Ray, Finn, and Poe fight their way to the Eclipse Star Destroyer. So I believe that's the name of the Star Destroyer that, that Ray, Finn, and Poe end up um, stealing. And uh, so there's an image of them in the hallway. And uh, we get a look at, I mean, I think the, the most interesting part of it is we get a look at Ray's double-sided lightsaber, um, which is blue, double-sided, and apparently built from the, um, the remnants of the uh, hero lightsaber, the Luke, Anakin, Ray lightsaber from The Last Jedi. Um, so that's certainly intriguing. Um, she seems to be wearing, I guess, like Imperial, I don't know if that's meant to be her kind of new Jedi outfit costume in this movie. Um, it it looks like it could be um, some sort of First Order officer outfit look too. Um, hard to say. Uh, the belt looks like maybe a first order belt, so that's why I'm thinking. But it's just like dark colors. And uh, by the way, if you're if you're watching this, I'll I'll post the images in the video. And if you're listening, I will post the images in the uh, in the data, the metadata. What I don't know how you say it, but in in the notes for the for the podcast. So um, you should be able to take a look down at your phone or whatever and see these images there, because um, I'll I'll update them for each chapter. So. Um, but yeah, Ray is, uh, Ray's in this dark gear, but she's flanked on either side by Finn and Poe and Finn and Poe are both wearing like, um, basically stormtrooper, um, armor, but it's black. So, or dark gray or something like that. So, uh, I don't know if it's meant to be, um, like death trooper style armor, or if there would have been a new sort of trooper introduced here, um, that wears that style armor, or if, Perhaps there's some other well-known stormtrooper variant that I'm uh, that I'm I'm blanking on here, but yeah, I mean basically they're in stormtrooper gear except for it's black or dark colored. Um, so again, you know this could this could have been cool for sure. Um, I I would have enjoyed um, that potentially, although you know it's a little bit uh, reminiscent of of Luke and and Han um, in their stormtrooper gear in Star Wars: A New Hope, but I don't know. I mean that's not necessarily um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, there are plenty of moments in the Rise of Skywalker that are kind of uh, homages or callbacks to things from previous Star Wars movies, and I like those. So um, I may have liked that um, as well. It looks like this uh, Eclipse Star Destroyer must be a different class or, or type of Star Destroyer because it has a different a different design for sure. The the top of it, um, I mean, the it, it seems like a Star Destroyer, but with like a whole extra kind of I don't know how you describe the shape of it, but like a whole different um, kind of component underneath it as well. Um, so this last image um, from this portion of the movie uh, kind of features the orbital ring being destroyed as this Eclipse Star Destroyer breaks away from Kuat. Um, yeah, so uh, again, that's that's like basically the Kuat sequence and... Um, you know, there's there's maybe a little more discussion of it in the script leaks, and I, I don't know. It sounds like maybe the entire script is leaked at this point. Uh, again, I haven't seen that. I'm not sure where to dig to get it, um, but uh, you know, um, I feel like this group of images actually kind of. Um, I mean, it's not comprehensive, but it goes through the story and the script um, pretty well. So I feel like I get a pretty good taste of what the movie would have been just based on the, this um, group of, of concept art images. But but yeah, that's the that's what we see um, from the Kuat sequence here. We see that that there's this orbital ring. We see that um, that Ray, Finn, Poe, BB-8 um, kind of uh, uh, sneak their way into this shipyard and into this ship, and that they they steal this Eclipse Star Destroyer. Uh, why they are on a mission to steal a Star Destroyer from the First Order, uh, I'm not sure. And I'm uh, I'm sure that is more clear in the script. Again, I haven't read it. Um, but it, it, I don't know. I mean, it's a cool idea, you know, to, to steal something from the First Order like that and, and something of significance. On the other hand, uh, it feels like it would be full of stormtroopers. So what do you do with a, 
with a first order Star Destroyer um, that is like, even if you steal it, I would think there's a handful of resistance on it and then thousands of stormtroopers and first order, um, you know, officers and things like that. So there must be something I'm missing as far as how that story works out. But um, certainly with concept art, you know, part of part of the, the process, as far as I understand it, is you take some big swings, you get some ideas out there um, and you think about what would look cool. And this looks cool and it's a cool idea. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm, I'm missing some of the, the pieces as far as how this might have fit into the script and, and how to make sense of like where it fits in the story or, or how it fits in the story. Um, I'm really curious. And again, I know that the, uh, the Rise of Skywalker, the Art of book from Phil Showstack, apparently it was for sale or is for sale in, um, in some, some other country, some other part of the world released early or leaked early or something like that. So I'm super excited for Phil Showstack's Art of the Rise of Skywalker book, um, which has been delayed until sometime um, in late March, I think. And uh, I love the Art of books. They're like one of my favorite parts of a movie being released. Um, And so I can't wait for that book to come out. I don't know if it'll feature any of the art from the Colin Trevorrow era. I mean, it very well could. And for all I know, this art might be just leaked from that book maybe it's all in the art of the rise of skywalker i don't know um but uh you know one of the things that's great about those books is that they usually kind of go through the whole um, process you know pre-production into production and post-production and it kind of tells the story of the making of the movie you know obviously with a focus on the uh, concept art and um, that sort of thing but it, it, it does sort of tell the story of how the movie was made and um it would make sense to include you know Uh, this portion of it as well. Uh, I'm sure Lucasfilm owns the rights to this script and to the rights, uh, the rights to the, the, the art and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, I mean, it's fun to see a a bunch of images leaked online on, on uh, uh, from Reddit or whatever, but it would be even better to read about these things um, in the art of the rise of Skywalker from Phil Shosek. So, you know, who knows, maybe that'll be part of it. Okay, so next image is apparently from the planet Moraband, and uh, there's an alien race here called uh, Wamels, apparently, that are uh, taking care of Kylo Ren, and Kylo Ren is um, near death. And this is something that um, popped up when I was reading about um, Trevor O's script and, um, you know, the, the story within, and, and uh, you know, I guess Kylo is... Uh, in in pretty rough shape, and I, I missed. I'm not exactly sure what put him in that state. Uh, I'm sure again, it's it's more clear in the script itself, and and the, you know, there's uh, there's more information out there about you know the story, um, and uh, multiple drafts, and you know, different versions of uh, you know the story of what was in the story. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Kylo's in really rough shape. Um, he's being treated by the these aliens, these Wamels. Uh, here on Moraband. Um, the image is cool. The aliens look cool. Uh, it's like a goateed or like kind of, um, I don't know, Kylo looks rough. He looks like he's in bad shape, um, but not only because he's, you know, um, injured, but also he's got like a scraggly kind of goatee beard sort of look going on there. Um, but yeah, they're like wrapping his arms in um, some kind of bandages, and you can see that he's like scraped up and bloody and all that kind of stuff um so yeah i'm not really sure what's going on with kylo there and why he's so so um injured um but uh the description says that they're treating a near-death kylo so um yeah so next image is of leia on the resistance base on a planet called korolev i'm not familiar with that planet uh i assume it was developed for um, Colin Trevorrow's script. Um, the movie's called, or the script, I guess, was called Duel of the Fates, or Duel of, yeah, Duel of the Fates. Um, so I will try to refer to it uh, as that or as Colin Trevorrow's script um, because uh, I'm in the habit here of accidentally almost calling it The Rise of Skywalker, but I don't think that's accurate. Anyway, um, so Leia's here on this base. I mean, I, I get uh, Return of the Jedi Leia vibes for sure. She's got long braids. Um, and it looks a lot like Leia from Return of the Jedi on Endor. Um, even where she's standing looks almost like an Endor-style um, 
thing. You know, it, it's very reminiscent of Return of the Jedi. Um, and uh, would not surprise me if um, a still or an image from Return of the Jedi was used to kind of speed up the process of mocking up this uh, image of her there. Uh, other thing about her is that she is, uh, it's like long gray, uh, white even uh, hair. Her, her hair looks a little lighter, I would say, in this um, concept art than it did in The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi. Um, and again, her robe and clothing is all white. So, you know, definitely some, some Gandalf type vibes there. Um, and really it reminds me of Leia's look at the end of um, The Rise of Skywalker as well in the image, uh, well, I guess when when Rey sees her and Luke together uh, as Force ghosts there on Tatooine. From there, there's an image of Kylo Ren getting a new mask, and um, this is cool. I mean, it looks a lot like the, the sort of uh, structure that he's sitting in. It reminds me of both um, The Empire Strikes Back and Ka- uh, Darth Vader, um, but also... Um, there's these like arms reaching out these like medical arms twitchy you know kind of medical arms uh, um, that remind me of the last Jedi when he was being operated on there so I I wouldn't say that you get a great look at the mask in this image um, but the thing about it is that it's definitely a different approach than JJ took in the rise of Skywalker because it's not like the Kylo Ren mask that we know just sort of sutured back together or um what was the uh, kitsuge i believe is the name of the the japanese practice of of uh you know kind of filling in those cracks in ceramics or whatever um it's it's not that at all and it's it's just a completely different design from the design of the kylo ren helmet from the force awakens and the last jedi um you know i don't know i, I guess there's pros and cons to that approach but um i feel like to try to come up with a new um design for kylo's helmet that would be uh, that would stand up to the one from the you know first two movies. To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, you have an iconic mask, I think, and the Kylo Ren mask. And um, you know, if you want him to wear the helmet again, just have him wear the helmet again. Um, I think that what JJ did with the Kitsuge, you know, pieced back together helmet in The Rise of Skywalker is really cool. Uh, but I don't think, really think it was necessary. I mean. I wouldn't have questioned it if helmet if uh, Kylo Ren just showed up with another Kylo Ren helmet on. You know, I wouldn't have questioned it at all. Um, so either way, you know, the uh, the Kitsuge, you know, put back together helmet or just a spare copy of the Kylo Ren helmet from the first two movies, uh, I think either way would be fine. Um, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me to kind of go in and and do a new version of the helmet like like they're doing here, um, but. Again, I, I don't get like a great look at it from this image, so maybe it would have you know completely blown me away and it would have been amazing. Uh, I do think it makes sense to have him helmeted in some regard in Episode Nine, at least sometimes, and um, that's that's one thing that I've heard brought up as a complaint about um, the Rise of Skywalker. Like, this is an example of JJ and Chris Terrio and Lucasfilm wanting to undo the last Jedi. And so because in the last Jedi, you know, Kylo's mask is destroyed to bring it back is to say that, you know, we want to undo what Ryan did in the last Jedi. And I just don't really see it that way. I mean, even Ryan had Kylo Ren helmeted for, you know, part of that movie, but then I think he just wanted to, to work with Adam Driver's face and to have Adam Driver be able to emote and act without a helmet on. Um, and in the story, it made a ton of sense. I mean, he was angry, it demonstrated his rage, and, you know, when he's coming down that elevator after uh, Snoke belittled him, you know, that's a turning point for him in The Last Jedi. And so, you know, we don't see him with a helmet on anymore. I think it makes a ton of sense. At the same time, you know, he's he's going to be the villain in Episode Nine uh, for more of the movie in this Colin Trevorrow version than in the... Um, J.J. Uh, Rise of Skywalker version, but either way, he's going to be the villain for a big chunk of the movie, and um, it's a great design, an iconic design, and uh, I don't see why you wouldn't have him wear the helmet uh, at least sometimes. Um, and I mean, honestly, we see him without the helmet more in The Rise of Skywalker than than we see him helmeted, you know? Um, when he's Whenever he's interacting with Rey, almost, he has the helmet off. Um, I suppose on Kajimi, he doesn't, um, but uh, otherwise, you know, he takes that helmet off all the time. So 
uh, yeah, I, I'm a fan of the helmet, and I like bringing the helmet back. Um, I don't know that I would want to see a new helmet for Kylo Ren. I don't think it's necessary. So another new featured planet is Wavet, Wavet, um, and this looks like an icy uh, planet for sure. And um, I got to say, I, I'm, I'm loving the uh, concept art for this planet for Wavet. Um, and uh, the first piece of concept art features Ray in some kind of structure. Um, there's like icicles um, and ice all over the place. And we see her in the distance um, carrying what looks like her staff. But, um, you know, that looks cool. It looks uh, a little bit like Hoth, a little bit like Kajimi. Um, but uh, it definitely looks cool. But the second image of Wevet is, uh, is really striking. And um, it features... I think well, it looks like Ray, Finn, Poe, Chewbacca, um, and Rose. I, I think um, sitting around a fire. Now there, um, you know, it's a it's a long shot, so you don't see them up close. So I, that's why you know it's a little bit hard to tell exactly who we're looking at there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty striking because they're sitting on the ice. They're they're sitting around a campfire and they're they're on the ice. But you're seeing the horizon in the sky kind of um, reflected in the ice there and it's just a beautiful shot so um, you know I have no doubt that uh, ILM and, and you know the filmmakers could have um, really created something very visually striking in this sequence and uh, and I would have loved to have seen that um, apparently Poe is a bad steward of the Millennium Falcon um, whether Colin Trevorrow or J.J. Abrams makes this movie though because uh, I guess he um he uh, crashes it into this ice planet of Webet, and uh, I guess the Knights of Ren were chasing them too. It says the Knights of Ren were hot on their tail when Poe um, crashed into this planet of Webet. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and there's an image towards the end of the images we'll look at here where Ray pulls it up out of the ice. So um, I guess this is where the Falcon would have been for um, quite a while in the movie. But, you know, it doesn't, what I'm looking at here doesn't tell me that much about what Trevor O's story would have been um, necessarily, but uh, it is it is striking stuff. So then we get a few more images of another planet called Bonadan, 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 um, and this one um, reminds me. Well, it, it has a a little bit of a prequely vibe, I think, um, and uh, you've got these structures. I don't know what you'd call them, like landing platforms for ships and they're kind of it's like a spire with these um, landing platforms kind of poking out around it um, uh, for some reason it's giving me kind of Utapau vibes um, reminds me a little bit of Utapau and Kashyyyk the archi uh, architecture and the yeah just the look of those planets um, but it looks like there's like a market here on on Bonadan um, and also uh, water um seems to feature heavily. I don't know, maybe even like there's like waterways that you use to traverse this planet um, because there's um, some kind of ship called a razor sail that is also featured in a second piece of concept art from this planet, uh, Bonadan, Bonadan. And, uh, you know, those look cool too. Those those definitely have more of a prequel -y type vibe, I would say, um, as well. They, they have a little bit of a prequel look. And then the third image that seems to be from this planet of Bonadan is Chewbacca fighting the Knights of Ren. And I got to say, I would have loved to have seen this. Um, it's Chewie grabbing a Knight of Ren, throwing him into the air, and then shooting him out of the sky like a clay pigeon. It's pretty savage, pretty brutal. But um, I feel like Chewbacca would definitely have a bone to pick with the Knights of Ren, and um, I could I could see him doing this. So yeah, I, I could go for it. I could go for, for Chewbacca um, totally going buck on some Knights of Ren. Uh, I think it would have been cool. Okay, so it seems like the um, the images I'm getting to now are definitely closer towards the end of the movie. And Kylo is, uh, in the first image, Kylo is approaching a Sith temple on a planet called Remnicor. I don't know about the name, Remnicor. I feel like they're trying to like squeeze in um, reminisce or reminiscence, something like that, into the name Remnicor. I don't know. I'm sure it would have grown on me, but there's a Sith temple off in the distance and Kylo Ren um, standing there with his cloak flowing in the wind. Um, kind of a, kind of has like a Luke Skywalker. I've seen, I've seen concept art or poster art of Luke Skywalker in a similar stance there. So uh, almost a heroic look, but uh, 
you know, this is definitely still dark side Kylo Ren for sure. Um, and the temple itself, I don't know um, if it looks like the temples we've seen in um, canon in other ways uh, or other, I guess, examples of, of Sith temples in canon. I suppose it does. It's got like a, a very, um, it almost looks like a pyramid, um, sort, of, sort of a triangular structure. Um, it also seems to be broken in half. So I guess it's a little tougher to say exactly what it looks like um, when it would have been, you know, sort of all together. Uh, although it, it, it seems to be like gray or even uh, just like concrete on the outside. It doesn't have like the, I feel like a lot of times the Sith architecture is like black with like a lot of red in it and stuff. And um, at least based on this image, I'm not really seeing that in the the Sith temple on Remnicor. Um, but, you know, Kylo... Um, Visiting a Sith temple, uh, I think, makes a ton of sense. And we get something, you know, pretty similar with him going to Exegol uh, in The Rise of Skywalker. Um, so in the second image, Kylo and uh, his droid are navigating Remnicor is what the the subtitle says. Um, but, yeah, it's almost like, um, like Darth Maul's sort of uh, droid that he had in The Phantom Menace that went off the, I th- what was that? Uh, I forget what they're called now. I want to say Sith Infiltrator, but that was the name of his uh, ship, not his um, his probe droid looking uh, droid. But anyway, there's one of those um, with Kylo here as he's navigating Remnicor. And then, um, really interesting, uh, there is a tree here in, in, in this third image, and Kylo is sucking the life force out of a tree here on Remnicor. Um, and yeah, I'm not really sure what that's all about. Um, I don't think... I've seen much about that in the um, discussions of the leaked scripts, at least the stuff that I've read. Um, but it does, you know, seem reminiscent of The Rise of Skywalker, probably coincidentally, I suppose. But, but uh, you know, we see a very similar image of Emperor Palpatine sucking the life force out of um, the dyad there, out of both Rey and Kylo. Um, and so... You know, and even, go I mean, going all the way back to pre The Force Awakens and then definitely again with The Last Jedi, as fans, we were just kind of wondering, like, um, or we were we were talking about trees that we thought maybe had significance within The Force. Um, and so, you know, it's an idea that has definitely been kind of floating around in the sequel trilogy. Uh, again, I'm not really sure if he's, like, tapping into the power of the Sith or if there is a specific, um, you know, Sith Lord whose power is is somehow... Um, connected to this tree, but uh, yeah, Kylo sucks the life force uh, from a tree is uh, what we have here. Maybe it's just dark energy. Uh, Next image is of a new resistance ship, and this one to me looks a ton like the um, kind of um, clone drop ships and Attack of the Clones. Um, Very much I'm getting like a prequel sort of vibe from it, um, which, you know, would for sure be welcomed, I think, uh, in, in episode nine, um, the episode nine that we have, the, really the whole sequel trilogy that we have has a pretty consistent, um, visual language in the, um, you know, especially the design of the ships and that kind of thing. It's all very firmly rooted in the original trilogy, just kind of an updated version of that. And I think there's definitely an argument to be made for keeping that consistent throughout all three movies. Um, that being said, I could have gone for like a little bit more of a prequel look to certain things in this last movie just to kind of, you know, give that shout out to the prequels, but, um, I can definitely see not doing it too and just wanting to keep things looking pretty consistent throughout. Uh, next image, uh, features Finn and he is captured and imprisoned in a work camp on Coruscant. Um, and there is a, a note with this one that says this is from an early draft. And so sounds like this is something that probably would not have survived into um, the later drafts of uh, Colin Trevorrow's version of episode nine. Uh, yeah, I mean, the image itself looks fine. Um, it's cool, but I just don't think I really like the idea of Finn being stuck in prisoned in a work camp. Um, I don't know, unless he's undercover or something. Uh, again, that info might be out there. And I'm just not aware of it, but yeah, that, that doesn't excite me. Um, seems like an odd choice. Um, what would be a cool choice is to include uh, Coruscant in this final movie. I'm pretty surprised, actually, that it is not um, shown or visited in any way in The Rise of Skywalker, uh, but Coruscant would have been part of this story. 
And so um, there's an image here of TIE fighters chasing the Falcon through the Coruscant Citadel. I mean, it is what you'd expect. Um, it's TIE fighters chasing the Falcon, and uh, you can tell it's on Coruscant. So it looks good. Um, I mean, the image itself is, you know, uh, it, I guess what you'd expect or pretty similar to what you'd expect. But uh, I think the, the interesting point there is is the fact that we could have gone to Coruscant. We didn't go to Coruscant, um, and I kind of wish we did. Um, next one is an image of BB-8 um, fleeing from oncoming fire on Coruscant uh, as well. Uh, I believe it's on Coruscant. Um, and then in the background, uh, you can see R2 and C-3PO. And uh, I think that C-3PO's uh, role in The Rise of Skywalker is, you know, clearly fantastic. I mean, I don't hear from too many people, uh, even those that don't like the movie, that don't think that C-3PO's involvement in it was great, you know. Um, so... Um, but R2, on the other hand, you know, we could have had some more R2. And, um, this is, there's another image I've seen of, of 3PO and R2 together. Actually one that Colin Trevorrow specifically commented on and said, Hey, it looks like R2 might be dead there, but we never would have killed R2. Um, but anyway, in the background of this image, C3PO is kneeling down and he's got his arm around R2. So, um, yeah, you know, I, 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 man, I, I love the way that C-3PO is used so much in um, The Rise of Skywalker that I don't think I'd want to even toy with a different, you know, version of of um, his involvement. But for him and R2 to have been together a little more, that, that certainly would have been nice. Um, the next image features stormtroopers fighting against Coruscant citizens on Coruscant. So, um, you know, that, that's an idea that I think makes a lot of sense and, and is it would be cool um, to see the galaxy, uh, you know, represented here on Coruscant, but to see the, the people um, kind of fighting back against the First Order. And, you know, we never really even saw that as far as the Empire goes um, in, in any of the, uh, the films. Uh, in the special editions, of course, you see like the statues being pulled down and you see the celebration of the people, but um, it could have made sense or it would have made sense and could have been really cool to have um, stormtroopers brought in I'm sorry, not stormtroopers, to have citizens brought in and uh, involved in a battle in some way. So that's an idea I definitely like, and uh, it's a pretty striking image. So now we're coming to the final few images here, and um, this stuff gets pretty juicy. The next one is Kylo inside a cave on Remnicor. Um, as Tor Valum describes it, a virgence in the Force. Okay, so this is interesting on a couple levels. Number one, um, visually, it looks really distinct and really interesting. Um, there's, uh, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, I think it's hard to kind of represent here or, or hard to describe anyways what this virgence and the force looks like, but it looks very mystical, very colorful, um, very interesting. It's also pretty reminiscent of Kylo Ren in some of the, um, well, actually, it's really reminiscent of Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens, that classic shot of him in the trailer for The Force Awakens uh, on Starkiller Base when he stops and ignites his his uh, lightsaber. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's a great image. But then Tor of Alum is something that has not come up in this concept art uh, yet. And I think there are maybe images, concept art images of Tor of Alum floating around. But my understanding of Tor of Alum is that Tor of Alum is a ancient Sith um, that actually was like, Palpatine's master or trained Palpatine in some way um, and so it's sort of like I guess in in both this movie in, in, in this concept of a movie you know Duel of Fates here from Colin Trevorrow and in The Rise of Skywalker um, the thought was hey we need to bring in like last movie we have to kind of like pull in some big bad you know in some way and so of course in The Rise of Skywalker it's Palpatine and the movie has received its fair share of criticism for that because, hey, where'd he come from? And, you know, they don't go out of their way to explain it, really, besides a couple lines. That works for me. That's fine for me. Um, but I know a lot of people are frustrated that, you know, it's not explained anymore. Um, in this case, they say, uh, or I guess in this case, the idea is, well, you never knew it, but there was this whole ancient evil Sith, Tor Valum, who's been um, involved in the story all along or, you know, has some connection to the story, I guess, um, all along. So, yeah, but Tor of Alum, I don't know about Tor of Alum. Um, I guess, you know, it's, it, I really should reserve judgment until I, or, well, I never will, but um, without having seen it in execution in the movie, I guess it's hard to say, you know, where I come down on it overall, but um, just not a concept that I um, 
you know, am super excited about, I guess you'd say, this idea of this ancient Sith that we never knew about, but all of a sudden shows up out of nowhere. Um, and uh, it, I just don't have a lot of investment in it, you know. And so when it's Palpatine that um, that Rey and Kylo have to overcome in the end of The Rise of Skywalker, uh, I feel like there's investment there. And, you know, um, to me, it's it's a pretty good thing to compare to uh, Palpatine coming back on the Rise of Skywalker because, you know, it is easy to look at that and say, it doesn't make a lot of sense for him to still be alive. Does it kind of undermine the ending of Return of the Jedi? Um, but, you know, and those are valid concerns for sure. And they could have made more of an effort, I guess, to explain uh, why and how Palpatine was back. But all that being said, I'd rather have a villain back that I have some investment in and that has some legitimate connection to the story and it makes a lot more sense for Palpatine to have been like this big bad who's been overseeing things all along than all of a sudden in the final moments of of the saga to say well what about Torvalum you know I just don't really that doesn't excite me so speaking of things that I personally don't love uh, the next couple images feature Mortis now I know this would have been huge for a lot of people like it would have been really exciting for people um, to have Mortis show up in episode nine so um, I can say that like I'm, I'm bummed for uh, everybody who would have been excited for that. But um, personally, yeah, the Mortis thing, like I just didn't really love it in the Clone Wars. Um, and so it, had it been part of episode nine, I think it would have it would have taken me out of the experience a little bit. But uh, I know for a lot of people, it would have done the exact opposite. So um, it's it's really interesting that Colin Trevorrow was going to include uh, Mortis in the in his version of episode nine. Um the first image features Rey looking up at Mortis uh, or at the Temple of Mortis. I mean, she's she's on the planet of Mortis and she's looking up at the Temple of Mortis and uh, you just see it way off in the distance. So it's interesting because the planet itself looks colorful. There's green and, and reds and, and there's, um, you know, trees and, and life. Um, it, it looks like, uh, yeah, not what I would expect. Um, but then this Temple of Mortis is way up in the distance on the top of a mountain. Um, and so Ray is uh, obviously going to journey there. So the next image features Ray and Kylo Ren facing off at the peak of the Temple of Mortis. And, I mean, this looks cool. Um, Ray has her double-sided blue lightsaber, um, and Kylo Ren is there masked. He has his, you know, obviously his lightsaber. Um, and I don't, I don't know. It's been a while since I've gone back and watched the Mortis episodes, but the way the temple looks... Um, I guess it's pretty close to what I remember. Um, I'm sure they would have made an effort to, to make it look pretty pretty close to the way it was presented in Clone Wars. I mean, obviously, you're going from animation to film, so um, there'd be some changes there. But, yeah, it, it looks it looks pretty close, I suppose. Um, certainly similar concept there. So, uh, you know, the idea that this final Star Wars lightsaber battle in Episode Nine between Rey and Kylo Ren would take place um, on Mortis, I think, would be... Yeah, really exciting for people. So the next image is probably, well, it's one of the most exciting um, and most interesting images in this leak of concept art. Uh, it features Yoda, and Yoda is, um, he's kind of like, there's a lot of light around him. There's stars in, in, in like a star field behind him, but it's not like space. Like it's a, it's a very uh, bright, um, lit kind of heavenly environment. Um, there's a lot of, uh, uh, stars, like a star field behind him, like I said. Uh, and then you also see the images of what appear to be, um, Jedi, uh, behind him. And this image also has a ton of text, uh, with it. Um, so I'll read that text. It says, Ray lays on the stone slab, still injured. Light fills up the space around her, particles of energy floating up. She rises with the energy. The light engulfs the frame until we reach a place beyond what we know the astral plane. Yoda, Luke, and Obi-Wan appear before her. Ray, is this death? Obi-Wan, in this place there is no such thing as death. Yoda reveals Ray succeeded where they failed. Luke, you chose to embrace the dark side and the light to find the balance within. They offer Ray a choice to stay in the comfort of the astral plane or return to the living where she will experience both love and loss. The spirits fade. Obi-Wan, you are a Jedi, Ray Solana, but you will not be the last. Wow. So, yeah, there's a ton here. Um, let's start with the astral plane thing. Uh, 
it's really interesting. It's not completely different from what we got in the the conclusion of the Rise of Skywalker with Rey looking up and hearing the voices of uh, of all the Jedi um, from before. Uh, I think what I like about the Rise of Skywalker version more than this version, though, is that we hear all that, but we don't see it. You know, um, and. I know that that's a complaint that a lot of people have about that moment in The Rise of Skywalker. Like, we wanted to see all these Force Ghosts. We don't just want to hear Anakin and Mace Windu and Ahsoka and Obi-Wan and, you know, all those characters. We want to want to see them. Um, and, I, you know, I was on record going into uh, The Rise of Skywalker saying, like, I can't believe, you know, it's crazy to me if they don't have Hayden Christensen back in some capacity, if we don't see Hayden Christensen. Um, so I understand that. Uh, but then seeing episode nine, seeing the Rise of Skywalker, um, I just feel like the way that they incorporated all those Jedi was very um, restrained. And as a result, it doesn't feel too cheesy. It doesn't feel obnoxious. It doesn't feel forced. It feels right. And so it's not to say that, you know, this couldn't have worked out. It couldn't have looked good. It couldn't have been right. But there's just something about it that feels... I don't know, like it may may have come across too cheesy. It might have come across as um, just it wouldn't have, we wouldn't have bought it. You know what I mean? Um, And so I think the more restrained approach that the Rise of Skywalker took is uh, is something that I'm a little little happier with. You know, another thing is that like, well, I mentioned earlier that I don't really love the Mortis stuff in the Clone Wars. And I also really don't like the um, the stuff with the wills when... uh, in the, in the Lost Missions episodes of the Clone Wars when Yoda learns sort of the secret of returning uh, or retaining his his uh, identity in the Force or whatever. Um, to me, it's just like the less said about that, the better. The less we know about that, the better. Um, you know, I don't even want to know a lot about how one retains their their sense of self in the, in, or their identity in the Force or whatever. Um, I certainly don't want to see it. You know what I mean? And it, to me, it goes from something mystical and really cool um, and very Star Wars and just, it just completely changes what the whole Force Ghost, retaining your identity in the Force, whatever thing is, when we go from, um, you know, seeing them come back every once in a while to going to the place where they are. So World Between Worlds, Mortis, um, you know, the Wills episodes with Yoda or episode with Yoda in the last season of the Clone Wars, that stuff doesn't work for me personally. Um, and so, yeah, I don't think this would have worked for me very well either. The other thing that's really compelling about this um, is the whole embracing the dark and the light side thing. Um, and uh, the idea that Yoda and Luke would tell Ray, like, hey, you succeeded where we failed because we were all about the light side, but you're embracing both the light and the dark. Ooh, man, that is not an idea that I personally respond to at all. Um, and I wonder if it was one of the key issues with um, this concept and the, and the script and this version of the story. Just to me, man, that doesn't really work. Um, it just really seems to contradict what Star Wars has kind of always been about. So, um, you know, I think The Rise of Skywalker doubles down on most of those concepts. It doubles down on the idea of uh, nonviolence. It doubles down on the idea of sacrifice. It doubles down on, you know, selflessness. And um, Ray really never turns to the dark side. I mean, there's darkness that, you know, kind of... Um, that she struggles with a little bit in the rise of Skywalker as we all do. But, um, you know, Ray is, uh, she stays firmly planted in, in the light side in terms of her actual decisions. And, uh, she even tells Palpatine at the end of the movie, like all you want is for me to hate, but I won't even hate you. Um, I think that's the true heart of a Jedi. Um, and for this movie to kind of argue that like, Hey, you know, um, Ray, you succeeded where we failed because we should have just like let the dark side in a little bit more. Man, I just, uh, yeah, it seems to be a misreading of what Star Wars is about um, as far as I'm concerned. So that doesn't really work for me. Um, another thing that doesn't totally work for me is this name Ray Solana, which seems to be um, an attempt to bring together the names Solo and Organa. And, uh, but they're not connecting her to Solo and Organa as far as the story goes. Like she's not supposed to be related to either one of them. Uh, so yeah, I 
guess it's just like an homage to those characters, but not meant to be like a, a story significant name. I don't know. Not, <laughs> not super into that either. Okay, so just two images left uh, as far as this group of images that I found. Um, this last one features Ray pulling the Millennium Falcon up out of the ice on this Wavet uh, Wavet planet. Um, and uh, that I'm into. I think this looks really cool. It's a beautiful image. Um, and, you know, I like the idea of her pulling the Falcon up uh, out of the water. Uh, obviously, it's a callback to The Empire Strikes Back when Yoda... Um, pulls up the, the X-Wing where Luke fails. Um, we have a take on that in the version of The Rise of Skywalker that we got in that, um, you know, Luke pulls that X-Wing up again on Octo. Um, I think it would have been better in The Rise of Skywalker if it were Rey who were pulling that X-Wing up instead of Luke. And so um, for her to be pulling up this Millennium Falcon, uh, I even like that better than Rey pulling up the X-Wing, honestly, because um, it's still reminiscent of that. It's still a callback to that. But uh, it's it's different enough that it's a more subtle homage. Yeah. So uh, then, just two more images. The last uh, or the second to last image is just uh, Ray, a reflection of Ray in BB-8's um, eye. And uh, you know, uh, I think we got something fairly similar to that in one of the final shots, or actually the final shot of the Rise of Skywalker with Ray and and BB-8. Um, you know, kind of uh, walking away with the twin sons off in the distance. And uh, I, I like the idea of, of episode nine and whatever capacity ending with, with Ray and BB-8 together in some way and, and then, um, you know, as a pair. Because uh, I think that, that the connection between BB-8 and Ray really speaks to the heart of who Ray is as a character. And yeah, I love them together. So um, I think probably similar impulse from, from both um, kind of groups of filmmakers there. Uh, the other thing that's interesting about it is that the planet is called Modesta, um, which reminds me of Modesto, which I believe is where George Lucas grew up. So uh, hopefully that was a little bit of a, a, a nod to George there, and I like that idea a lot. And then the very last image is Rey um, arriving to train a new generation of Jedi. And I'm not sure what planet this is on, but um, it looks quite a bit like the Jedi school or Jedi temple that Luke had set up um, in The Last Jedi and uh, that we only see at night and on fire. Um, it looks a lot like that, but it is uh, bright daylight and it's very green and verdant. And uh, BB-8 is there rolling around. It looks like he's being chased by some children and it just seems very joyful. So, um, you know, I could have done, I could have definitely handled that as the last shot uh, of the film. Um, I think it would be, you know, a, gr a great way to end the, the saga um, or end the film, I guess. Maybe not quite as great of an ending to the saga, just in that it really invites us to want to see what happens with this Jedi school and what happens with Ray's students and what happens with Ray and all that, you know. Um, and it's not like I don't want to know <laughs> what will be next for Ray and Finn and Poe and uh, those characters. I do, but I think the way that The Rise of Skywalker ends is by saying, like, hey, we're taking these two lightsabers, like these these symbolic uh, representations of the last 40 years and this whole story of Luke Skywalker and his father and his sister and, you know, now Rey and Kylo Ren. Um, we're taking that story and we're putting it to bed. You know, we're burying it. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll return to Rey. Maybe we won't. But uh, either way, I think for episode nine, um, it's a it's a more fitting conclusion to kind of have something that feels more final instead of something that feels like a promise of what comes next. Um, but all that being said, I, I really do I like this idea as well. I think it makes sense that Ray would want to continue the Jedi. I think she would. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like a beautiful final shot as well. All right, so that's my look at um, at least some of the leaked concept art from Colin Trevorrow's Duel of the Fates script. Uh, I think there's a lot of beautiful stuff in there. I mean, it's the same concept art team that's worked on all these Star Wars uh, films. So um, the concept art itself is, of course, beautiful. But uh, I think there's a lot of great ideas represented in these concept art images, too. Um, you know, I... I would love to be able to read the entire, you know, Duel of the Fates script, and I would love to get, you know, uh, a great idea of, of what that film would have been. Um, I feel like I have pieces of it now, but um, it's it's incomplete, obviously. Now, I know, I think there are full scripts out there uh, right now um, floating around, and, you know, if I track one of those down, um, I would certainly read through it, but 
even in that case, it's it's not a final script that went into production, right? So, um, you know, we could find probably previous versions of the Force Awakens script that are so different from what it turned out to be. Um, and the same thing with Rogue One and probably Solo too. Um, maybe not so much The Last Jedi because The Last Jedi seems like it was like written pretty quickly and they pretty much stuck with it. So, um, but but the point is that this is not a final you know vision for the film. It's it's um, it's a vision for what the film would have been. Uh, and there's there's some really interesting stuff in there. Um, I don't think I prefer it to what we got in The Rise of Skywalker. I mean, I think there's some pretty significant ways in which The Rise of Skywalker to me feels more like um, an appropriate conclusion to the Skywalker saga than uh, what is hinted at with this concept art and, and these leaked scripts. Um, but there definitely is a lot uh, in there that's really interesting. And personally, I find it uh, pretty fun to to kind of um, speculate and to research and look into um, what may have been. So, yeah. You can follow everything we do at blockaderunnerpodcast.com. Um, let us know what you think about the show, blockaderunnerpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at blockaderun. So thanks very much for watching and or listening, and we'll be back soon with another episode. <laughs>